630 WMAL. 737 Morning Majority, Brian Neiman, Mary Walter in this morning. Busy week in Washington, that's for sure. President announces he's running for re-election. We've got Libya, Yemen, Syria. Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, but especially Libya, Yemen, Syria. I guess Ivory Coast do all have leaders barely holding on to power. The administration does a 180 on military tribunals, and the Republicans unveil their 2012 budget, complete with entitlement reform, or so we're told. So uh, a lot of stuff going on right now in D.C. ABC's Jake Tapper, senior White House correspondent, joins us now. Jake, let's start with the uh, with the government shutdown. We just had uh, Congressman Steve King from Iowa on, one of uh, the Tea Party Republicans, and he told us that, that there is a deal on the table, essentially, that would keep the government open for one more week in exchange for $12 billion in cuts. What are you hearing the latest on on the CR, at least. Well, that is uh, what the Republicans are offering, uh, $12 billion in new cuts in one more week. It also would fund the Pentagon uh, through the rest of the fiscal year. Um, Democrats in the White House have expressed real reluctance to keep funding the government in these one- or two-week spurts. Uh, So I'm not sure if that would fly. Uh, I'm not saying it won't, but there is a a real concern um, that it's damaging to the economy. Uh, to keep funding the government in these little piecemeal measures. And President Obama this morning will be meeting with uh, Democratic and Republican leaders, uh, House Speaker John Boehner, Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid, as well as two uh, key appropriations chairmen, uh, Rogers and Inouye, will be coming to the White House uh, later this morning for a meeting to try to hammer out a deal. Okay, well, we heard earlier in the week that there was possibility for $33 billion worth of cuts in exchange for finalizing this. Um, was that ever seriously considered, and who balked at that if it if it was seriously considered? I can say that according to Democrats close to the process, um, there's real concern that uh, about the way that this negotiation is is happening. You might remember in December uh, the way that the tax cut deal was hammered out was Vice President Biden and Republican Senate Leader Mitch McConnell basically just hammered out a deal. Um, this negotiation is being done on the staff level, uh, and Democrats say that they're not sure that House Speaker John Boehner uh, really can control his caucus mm-hmm. uh, and that he can't really negotiate uh, or the staff members can't negotiate because it's unclear uh, what he can get his caucus to agree upon. So that, that makes it difficult, they say. When you talk about uh, John Boehner not being able to get his caucus, not being able to get everybody to agree, is that because of the Tea Party influence where they're kind of pulling and pulling further and further right and they're they're willing to dig their heels in, whereas maybe more of the moderate Republicans are saying, OK, let's cut our losses. Let's be smart about the battles that we pick. I, I, yes, exactly right. And, and I, I think that there's also... Um, I mean, this, this whole debate right now that we're going through is just the first act of a much, much larger play. Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be a much bigger debate. Um, the next act will be, after this, is, after this situation is taken care of, however it's taken care of, the next thing will be, uh, the next debate will be uh, raising the debt ceiling, uh, which uh, Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner wrote to congressional leaders yesterday. Uh, that needs to be raised by May or else risking an economic catastrophe in June. And then, of course, the act after that comes with the big debate over the direction of the country when it comes to debt and deficits and spending cuts that need to take place. Uh, and, uh, and that will be a major debate as well. So th- this is all we're going to be hearing a lot about these issues for the next uh, six to nine months. Well, have you, do you know any details about Paul Ryan's and the Republicans' budget, the one that you were just talking about, the 2012 budget? And are you surprised? Is there any reason for the timing having it being released this week as we're talking about the other budget still? Uh, well, I, I think that uh, Paul Ryan's budget, uh, I mean, I, I've only, I haven't read it. I've only right. seen bits, and, sure. bits, bits in, the, in, the, in the media. I think he releases it uh, later today. Uh, the White House has been reluctant to criticize it. They've only said uh, that they look forward to seeing it. It's time for an adult conversation about these issues. Um, obviously, uh, what what they've seen in the papers um, reflects uh, different priorities than, than their budget would, uh, but it also is much more serious when it comes to cutting the debt and the deficit. Um, I, I don't think that the timing uh, was... I, I think it was coincidental. I don't think anybody knew the shutdown would be coming the same. The potential debate over the shutdown will be coming the same day as, as Paul Ryan introducing his budget. They always were talking about doing it uh, in April. 
And if the government shuts down, if, the, if, if this is forced and nobody gives in and the government shuts down, uh, are the Democrats going to take that as a victory when a majority of Americans said, you know what, shut it down? No, I don't think they can. Uh, the polling on this is very different than it was for President Clinton. When Clinton and Gingrich were involved in the mm-hmm. shutdown uh, negotiations and, and that debate in the 90s, more uh, of the American people blamed Gingrich and the Republican Congress then blamed Bill Clinton. As of right now, the polling looks about even as to who the American people say they will blame for the shutdown. Uh, so I don't think it can be construed as a victory. And there is, look, uh, there, is, there are economic um, pitfalls to a shutdown. I and mean, it will have, you know, you, there are 2 million government employees, and you, you remove the paychecks of a, a sizable number of them, and, and uh, that has an economic impact. Uh, obviously, it's not exactly reassuring to Wall Street or, or to those, uh, from, you know, who look to Washington to see where budget negotiations are going, where the fiscal situation is. Uh, and then, you know, in, in addition, the American people, uh, you know, there are veterans' uh, administration checks, there are museums that are shut down, there are parks that are shut down, there are all sorts of other ramifications. Uh, so I do think that uh, nobody will be rejoicing uh, right. if there is a shutdown. All right, Jake. Great to have you on the show, as always. We appreciate your time.